Hi, my name is Pastor Kenny Mugwena. Join me on TBN in Africa every Thursday at half past five as we unveil the mystery of the Christ in you. It's time for you to experience the blessing. Don't miss it. There is a mystery that is being revealed in these last days. There is a mystery that has been hidden before the ages, which is Christ in us. Christ in us. He is that light. Christ in us. He is that light. He is the eye in you. Christ in us. This is the mystery that has been hidden before the ages for our glory, which is Christ in us. And every revelation that you are in Christ, and Christ is in you. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care how many fingers they point at you. When you know that I am in Christ, you know you are in the secret place. The Bible says those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall find rest under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy, no foe can withstand. Welcome to the broadcast today. We are continuing with our message titled Wilderness Battles. My name is Pastor Kenny Mugwena and it's time for you to experience the blessing. You know, in these days that we're living in, we face so much challenges. Sometimes we wonder when we are going through these challenges that are we really born again? It's a light affliction which is but for a moment you are coming out of that situation. So this message is meant to encourage you. So sit down, relax, and enjoy the message. We are starting with our prayer and impartation for five days from Monday the 1st all the way to Friday the 5th. So I want to encourage you to come and join us. We pray every month for five days, beginning of the, of the, of the month. So the first five days of the month, we pray the whole weekend. The last day on a Friday, we have an all-night prayer telling you come out of these prayer meetings so much strengthened and prepared to face everything that is coming our way. We face challenges, but challenges don't mean anything to us because we always stay in the presence of God. So come and join us. Your life will never be the same again. Are you ready for a message? Let's start with the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for the people that are watching. Pray for that God that you cause them to experience the blessing through this broadcast today. Give them understanding, Lord God, because you said in the word that in all our getting, we get understanding. I give you praise, glory, honor, and majesty in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's go straight to the message. I'm coming to pray because I want to walk in power every time. I want to hear the voice of God always. I want to be in communication with God every time. I want to engage God's power to be involved in my life all the time. That is why challenges come and go. I don't feel them. Why? I'm always activated. Prayer is activation of power in your life. They only pray when they, they go through challenges. Come on. How can a believer not pray? How can a believer not pray? How are you going to be powerful if you don't pray? How is God going to saturate you with his presence if you don't go to him? The Bible says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. People, when they go through challenges, they cry out to the Lord, but not according to knowledge. People have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. When you pray, how do you pray? Let me tell you, there are certain scriptures that God has placed for believers in his word concerning finances and he's saying do these things when you come to me you activate these things and believers don't know these things but you know them don't ignore these things what god says is right you must see it as right when you are in the wilderness that's the time where you the reality of who you are gets clear i really want to encourage you i want you to get the heart of this message because i believe this is this message is very important amen it's important for us because we live in the world. And the world is a wilderness, amen, which God is turning into a garden. That is why the Bible warns us that we have an adversary on this earth, amen. And for as long as we are still in our bodies, we will face challenges, hallelujah. So this message is preparing us to know how to respond to challenges so that we are not, you know, 
confused when challenges come and we think God does not love us. God does not exist because the scripture says, if God is for us, who can be against us? He says we are led like sheep into a slaughter, but in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Hallelujah. So wilderness battles. What is a wilderness? We said a wilderness is an uncultivated, uninhabited, inhospitable, neglected, abandoned, or wasteland. Amen. It's a place where nothing is growing. It's a place which is not pleasant. It's a place where nobody wants to be there. It is a place of insufficiency. It's a place where there are trouble at every side. But it's also a place where we know that the Spirit of the Lord is moving. Hallelujah. At least for us, we know we are not in the wilderness to be consumed. No, we are in the wilderness to rule in the wilderness. Hallelujah. The Bible says those who receive the abundance of grace, they shall reign in this life by one Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are destined to reign in this life. Hallelujah. So the wilderness is a place where the battle lines between the flesh and the spirit are drawn. It is a place of trial and temptation. Hallelujah. Jesus told us, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. I've deprived it of any power to harm you. Hallelujah. So if you are in the wilderness today, you must know that you are not in the wilderness to be consumed. You are in the wilderness to demonstrate the Christness of who you are. Hallelujah. Are you in Christ? Are you in Christ? If Christ be in you, though your body be dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Hallelujah. You go to a dry place to make it a fruitful land. Hallelujah. You do the wilderness and you actually a favor by being there. If you know who you carry inside you. If you know that I have a treasure in my earthen vessel. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah. So why are we calling it a spiritual conquest? We call it a spiritual conquest because the wilderness is a, is a, it's a place of spiritual solutions. It's a place of supernatural solutions. We conquer in the spirit first before we can conquer in the physical. The problem with many people, they want to have results in the physical, but they don't conquer in the spirit. Let me tell you, you are strong when you understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit. You are strong when your eyes can see in the spirit. That's why the Bible in the book of uh, Psalm 112, it says, For the upright, light arises in the dark place. We are not those who grope. To grope is to search for something in the dark by feeling. You can't see anything. No. If you enter into a wilderness and understand whose you are and who is in you, and you understand the power that you have, you understand that you enter the wilderness as a king. You don't enter the wilderness as a servant or a slave. No, no. When the children of Israel got out of Egypt, they were no longer slaves. They were kings and priests. What made them to be defeated is because they did not know who they were. And they gave in when pressure comes. When you are in the wilderness, you need to understand it's a place of pressure. Even when you are floating, you must know that pressure may happen anytime. Am I ready for it? This message is preparing you to be ready when pressure comes. The Apostle Paul told us in Ephesians chapter 6 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the, the, the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's what we wrestle against. So it tells us that look out for the evil day because it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Don't live life ignorant of the fact that challenges are a part of us until our bodies are redeemed. When we talk about the redemption of your bodies, we're talking about when the trumpet sound one day, when the Lord descend from heaven with a shout and call and say, come up here. And the Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us that our bodies are going to be changed, metamorphosed, transfigured. We will carry a body that will never be limited again, that will never carry a sickness, that is not limited by time and space, 
where the force of gravity is of no effect. We are looking for those days. We are living in expectation of that day. But until that day come, the Apostle Paul says, who will deliver me from this flesh of limitation? Who will deliver me? So you must, be, you, you must not be ignorant. You know, other places they won't tell you this. But I'm telling you so that you open your heart. Open your eyes. Look at the scriptures so that you know how to respond in the evil day. The most important thing is how to respond in the evil day. Many people don't know how to respond in the evil day. How to respond in the evil day. Nobody is immune for the evil day, church. No one, no one, they mustn't lie to you. When you pray and fast, you don't pray to wish away the evil day. You pray and fast to be strong, to be able to stand in the evil day. Do you know that, as a matter of fact, as believers, our prayer should not be, Lord, let not the test come. No, our prayer should be, Lord, give me the strength to endure in the test. That's what our prayer should be because after the test comes promotion. After the temptation comes promotion. But many people don't know that. You come out of every challenge at an advantage. That is why the, the James says, my brothers, count it all joy when you fall into different kinds of temptation. He says, count it all joy. But how can you count it all joy when you do not know how to respond to it? That's where the problem is. Wilderness battles. Say wilderness battles. Our spiritual conquests. It's not enough to say wilderness battles because remember, the battle is not ours. That's why we're calling it a spiritual conquest. It's a place of supernatural solutions. In the wilderness, don't resort to the flesh. You're going to delay yourself. You're going to stay in the wilderness for too long. In the wilderness, it's a place of supernatural solutions. Say supernatural solution. There are no solutions in the flesh. I gave you an example before. Look at the children of Israel when they face the Red Sea. How do they come out? No way to come out. Look at them when they cross over the Red Sea and go to Mara, where the water was bitter. In the natural, what can you put? There's no sugar in the wilderness. Even if you mix sugar with bitter water, it will, it will sound like something else. Look at them when they were beaten by snakes. What were they going to do? In the wilderness, there's no room for the flesh. You look for solutions in the flesh. You are just going to delay yourself. You're going to remain there more. There's no room. There's no room. It's impossible in the wilderness to find solution in the, in the flesh. That is why wilderness battles, God says, the battle is not yours. But you have to conquer in the spirit because you have been empowered to do so. Hallelujah. Our main text for this message is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in the Amplified Classic Edition. And I've not explained much about this chapter. It's just, maybe I'm going to say a little bit today, but just, just read it with some element of focus. Hear the words. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying concerning this verse. The, the part that stand out is that twice God said, these things are written as admonitions, as examples, as lessons to you who live in the last days. Amen. It says these things were written for our learning. But I like the fact that these guys in the wilderness, they were going with Christ. They did not know it. The Bible says that everything that they were provided for in the wilderness was a picture of Christ. Remember also when they got into the wilderness, when they found the waters of Mara. Do you remember how the waters of Mara were made sweet? How the waters of Mara were made sweet? God said to Moses, cut a tree. They cut the tree and throw it into the water, and the water was made sweet. That tree was a type or a picture of the cross, because the Bible in Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us as it is written. Cursed is every man that hangs on a tree. 
Look at them when they were beaten by, by snakes. Everything there about even the snake that was, the, the bronze snake that was on the, on the because it said lift up a, a rod or a stick, whatever. That stick was also the vertical beam of the cross. And it says put a snake there. But it said a bronze snake. Bronze represent judgment. So snake represents sin. Now when, when they looked at the cross, when they looked at that bronze serpent, they saw a picture of the Christ who bore their sins, whom judgment was upon. And as long as they looked at him, whatever poison on their bodies could not have any effect. Hallelujah. It's the same thing today. We look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Wherever we are beaten by the snakes of life, we fix our gaze at him. Because when we look at the cross, we remember that someone died for my sin. Someone died for my shame. Someone took my sickness. Someone took my poverty. Someone took my limitations. You look at the cross today, you don't see the Christ who was judged. You see the Christ who reigned in power. That is merely a reminder that Jesus used to be on the cross in the place where you're supposed to be. Hallelujah. Wilderness battles, our spiritual conquests. Hallelujah. So God delivered the children of Israel through the covenant of grace. It was the covenant of grace, the same covenant that we have. That's why God is giving us this verse. He says, look at it. He walked with them. He was not in them. With you and me, this is the mystery that was hid before the ages, which is now revealed Christ in us. The hope of glory. Do you know what the mystery of Christianity is? Christ in us, our hope of glory. Let this Christ not lie dormant in the inside of you. No, don't sleep and be afraid with the Christ in the inside of you. Don't look at a storm and be afraid with the Christ inside of you. The Bible says that rock was Christ. They didn't know him, but we know him. Hallelujah. So they were delivered through the covenant of grace. We just see the manifestation of the grace of God in the wilderness. In the wilderness, it's a place of appropriation of the grace of God. When you face challenges, when you are weak, that is where you believe and trust and depend on the strength of God because when you are weak, it says, then I am strong. Your place of weakness is your place of dominion. Your place of weakness is your place of strength because when you are weak, let me tell you, when you feel you are strong, you can't do anything until you are weak. You will never understand his strength until you go through weakness. You will never see him as a healer until you go through sickness. Are you listening to me? He's not the author of sickness. But he says, if the devil tries, let him try to put sickness upon your life. Watch the Christ come in action for you. You will never experience the power of God until you go through an area in your life where you really need to appropriate the power of God. The children of Israel were delivered through the covenant of grace. It was first the Passover lamb, symbolic of the blood of Jesus, that was slaughtered. When the Passover lamb was slaughtered, it was exactly the same picture when Jesus Christ was killed on the cross. Same thing, exactly the same thing. Are you with me? Exactly the same thing. And then that was the manifestation of God's goodness. Let me tell you how God expresses his heart. He expresses his heart through his hand. God always expresses out through his provision. That is why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Hallelujah. God expresses his heart through his giving. And we saw him. They murmured and complained. All that God does is he comes and he provides for them. They murmur and complain. God comes and he provides for them. Until they said some statements which said to God, we need a law that governs us. We don't want to be governed by the Christ. We don't want the cloud. We don't want, we want to be governed by the law. And when the law came, it began to kill them. Amen. So me and you, we are under the covenant of grace. Say, I'm under the covenant of grace. The Bible says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So in the wilderness, God's presence was always with them. I'm here to tell you today. That God's presence is always with you. You must believe that God's presence is always with you. You must go around with the consciousness that God's presence is always with me. If you can be conscious of the fact that you are not alone, 
the one who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you. I'm telling you, though you fall, you shall not be utterly cast down. Hallelujah. You will rise before you know it. Maintain that consciousness that the Lord is always with me. So the children of Israel, they enjoyed supernatural provision. That's why the scripture that we read here, it talks about supernaturally given food. Supernaturally given water. Because God provided for them supernaturally through a covenant of grace. And the same thing applies to us today. When you go through challenges, where do you look for? Do you look for solutions in your flesh, in your strength? Or do you engage the Christ in you to look for spiritual solutions? Believers look for spiritual solutions. That is why the Bible in the book of Habakkuk 2, 4, it says, They just shall live by faith. Romans 1, 17, They just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. We live. They just live by faith. They just live by faith. Nothing else. They just live by faith. Whatever you go through, Faith must be the solution for you. Hallelujah. Faith must be the solution for you. So the downfall of the children of Israel was their unbelief and their lust. You know what gives us access, what gives access to the devil in our lives? Our lust and the desires of our flesh. That's what creates problems for us. And in the wilderness, it's that place where the flesh gets exposed. The weakness of the, weakness of the flesh gets exposed in the wilderness that it can do anything that is why the wilderness is a place of spiritual solutions and i'm not trying to say to you i'm just trying to show you how important it is for us to learn dependence because you don't have to be you don't have to get to that level if you learn dependence if you learn to realize that your flesh in the wilderness can't help you when you go through challenges pgc we must learn to depend on god the Bible says the name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. Look at Peter when he was drowning. The minute he began to drown, he said, Lord, save me. But people, people, believers, when they go through challenges, they run around to look for solutions in the flesh. Sunday. Trying to find solutions elsewhere. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Run to it. The wilderness is a prerequisite for spiritual promotion. So spiritual promotion. You need to go through the wilderness for you to be promoted in life. The wilderness produces patience. Patience produces perfection and completion. Lacking nothing. Amen. I want to read a scripture for you which I want us to look at to open I'm going to go on a descent now. Deuteronomy 8, verse 15 to 17. I want to show you something very important on this scripture so that you understand the mind of God so that you can develop the right attitude when you are in the wilderness. Verse 15, it says, Deuteronomy from the New King James Version, it says, Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty lands where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock? Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you, to do you good in the end? Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has gained me this wealth. Verse 18, it says, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who will give you the power to get wealth. Amen. Now, I want you to see something here. It shows there's a number of things which are very important, which I want us to Look at quickly as we go towards closing. So God tested and humbled the children of Israel through provision. I said this during prayer on Monday. God humbled and tested them through provision. Look at what this verse says. It talks about the things that God did for them. And then it says the reason for it was to humble and to test them with provision. Are you listening to me? Let me give you an example so that you understand what, what, what we're talking about. Look at Abraham, for instance. God gave him Isaac. And then he come to him and say, give me now your son. Do you see how God tests him? Through provision. He gave him something and said, give it to me. He's testing him. Do you know where Isaac come from? Do you think you are the one who manufactured Isaac? And remember with Isaac, there was a promise made concerning Isaac. 
There was a promise made that he was going to be a father of many nations. He has not been a father of many nations. Isaac does not even have a wife at the time. He's still young. God said, give, it, give him to me. Now, what do you do when you're in that situation? God provided and then God says, bring. But some of you are struggling with giving to God. You think God wants to take from you. Man, God wants to give to you. God has no need. Do you know that God does not have a need? You're the one who have a need. God wants to take you to a higher level. But it doesn't test you through hunger. It's not saying, go and toil, and when we have toil, come and give. No. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 says, God give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He supplies the seed. He also supplies the bread. And he says, he multiplied the seed when it is sown. So he comes to you and he gives you the seed. He says, plant it. And then a black person eat the seed. He brings the bread, he eats the bread. That's why in this church we pray that Lord give us the wisdom to know the seed from the bread. Many people don't know the difference because it looks the same. It looks the same, but it's not the same. You need discernment, you need wisdom, you need understanding to know the seed among the bread. So he tested them through provision. I love God, man. Do you see grace? Do you see the heart of God? In this verse it says, I tested them. I humbled them. I made them to have a need so I can provide for them to be able to see what is in their hearts. I invite you to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Friend, I want to tell you there is nothing as precious as knowing Jesus for yourself. So many things become easy and you begin to understand them when you have the Christ living in the inside of, of you. So I want you to receive Jesus. Make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me on the cross. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I make you my Lord and my Savior. My friend, if you made that prayer, I believe you are born again. So I want to invite you to come to church every Sunday so that you can grow in your knowledge of God. You can fellowship with other believers. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. If you happen to live in the Pretoria area, come and be part of our services. So I invite everyone to come and fellowship with us. We preach the Christ in us and we reveal the mystery of the blessing that is working every day in our lives and i know your life will never be the same again i want to invite you to our all night prayer on friday the fifth but we start with our five days of prayer and impartation from monday all the way up to friday from six o'clock until half past seven come and be part of these services and your life will never be the same again we do this every month and on friday the fifth it's an all-night prayer. It's so amazing. People travel from other provinces to be part of these services and they write back to us and say, after coming to attend the services, our lives will never be the same again. So I believe that it's going to be the same with you. So come and be part of these services. I promise you, you will not regret you did that. So God bless you. See you again next time. Come on. How can a believer not pray? How can a believer not pray? How are you going to be powerful if you don't pray? How is God going to saturate you with his presence if you don't go to him? The Bible says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. People, when they go through challenges, they cry out to the Lord, but not according to knowledge. People have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. When you pray, how do you pray? Let me tell you, there are certain scriptures that God has placed for believers in his word concerning finances and he's saying do these things when you come to me you activate these things and believers don't know these things but you know them don't ignore these things what god says is right you must see it as right when you are in the wilderness that's the time where your the reality of who you are gets clear